I wonder if they'll, that generation will really, you know, come out in droves and support this movie. Do you know how long we've been working toward this? Yes. yes. It's everywhere. 20 years. Let be clear. Drive by movies you're watching. Fresh releases. My name is Blaze. And my name is James. And this week we're talking the brand new film, Bottoms. We are literally at the bottom. We have nowhere to go but up. Your club is over. They deserve a shot at showing everybody how fucking cool they are. Let's go fuck up some football players. Trophy. Bottoms is about two unpopular queer high school students who start a fight club to have sex before graduation. So this movie caught me off guard 100%. Um, I had seen the trailer originally. I think I saw it on TikTok. I was like, that looks funny. And luckily the trailer doesn't reveal a whole lot because this movie is a lot more bizarre and different from what I expected. Like you get a hint of it in the trailer. And when I walked out or walking in, like for the first 15 minutes, I'm like, what the hell am I watching? But when I left the theater, I was like, this is one of the best movies of the year. Blaze, what are your thoughts on it? Pretty much right there with you. This film for me, like it took me 30 minutes to understand the world of the film. Like I was just so confused. I was like, dang, there's a lot of people in this theater dying of laughter. And I was like, it's funny, but I'm not really sure if I'm there yet. Like, you know, and then it's just <laughs> it takes a minute. Eventually I get there. and I'm like, OK, I understand like the world. This is just the craziest world because it almost feels like uh, our two leads are playing like in a different movie than everyone else. They're kind of just in a normal like high school comedy. But then you have all these jocks that are playing and, and teachers that are just in this insane movie that it kind of just ends up being like, they felt like they're in a trauma movie or something, especially with the NXT <laughs> in the movie. I definitely saw some trauma influence there. Maybe it's just that New York influence or something, but that's that's at least where I, this film lied for me. I, I just had an absolute blast. I, I really hope that people come out to the theater to watch this movie because I feel like this is the, like some people might be like Oppenheimer, Barbie. Yeah. I think Bottoms is here to save cinema. We teach a bunch of girls how to defend themselves against the evil Huntington killers. They are grateful to us. We build a community. We bond. We share. We connect. We're punching each other. Adrenaline is flowing. Next thing you know, Isabel and Brittany are kissing us on the mouth. I don't think anyone expected two movies like Bottoms and Barbie to be coming out within like, you know, it's only been just a little over a month since Barbie came out. And just the fact that these two movies come out, like not to compare them against each other, but just who would have thought that like, that movie came out and then a movie that like is like a whole different like take on like feminism would come out and i know like emma siegelman deserves all the attention as well as it's uh the lead character played by uh, rachel sinyo both uh worked on the movie shiva baby which we reviewed here on fresh releases both absolutely loved that movie and we both ended the review saying can't wait to see what emma siegelman goes into and this is what we got is something i didn't expect but i don't I, somehow i don't see anyone on letterbox or rotten tomatoes talking about one of the funniest characters i've ever seen played by marshawn lynch i trusted you too and y'all exploited my solidarity. I played the role of an amazing ally. Is this about the time I said Amelia Earhart was a fake hero? Marshawn Lynch is is like what uh, is what I can't even think of his name because it's so useless in my head at this point. Uh, King LeBron, LeBron James, he dreams of being Marshawn Lynch as an actor. And Marshawn Lynch this is the first time I've ever seen him do stuff. I know, he, I guess he's been doing skits on YouTube and like Vine for a while, but just seeing him on screen, just like not steal every scene, but just like he is a force to be reckoned with when he's not even an actor. He's an NFL superstar and he just went full on beast mode in this movie. And yes, 
guess that pun was intended. Here you go again, James, talking about another feminist film and just talking about the man in the film. <laughs> first <laughs> oh, first it was Ryan Gosling. <laughs> now it's Marshawn Lynch. I'm going to get us back on track. But anyways, <laughs> this movie, uh, like, uh, I think that that was one of the biggest surprises for me beyond, like, getting used to the movie. Like, it was just uh, the surprise for me was seeing what uh, these film these filmmakers, because I, I know Rachel also helped write this or wrote this this movie as well you know uh shiva baby to this it's just not really a clear correlation as to how they got here but i'm so happy that we arrived here it's just two <laughs> entirely different movies you know you have this indie drama on one hand and then you have this like weird comedy that just feels so fresh and out there that uh it's just so strange how we appear there but these are the types of filmmakers that really excite me i like filmmakers like david robert mitchell where every movie they make is entirely different than the film before whether under the silver lake sink is career or not i really hope that the case isn't there for bottoms i hope that these filmmakers keep going on to make more films and that we see more of what they're made of we've seen rachel and other films films like uh bot or was it sorry bodies bot bottoms 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 i'm just kidding <laughs> bodies 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 but um yeah i just feel like maybe behind the camera as well as in front of the camera it's very exciting to see what these uh two filmmakers have, have come to create so uh yeah i just i i want more uh, movies like this that really subvert your expectations feel like something entirely fresh feel like a younger generation creating because they're younger than us it feels like younger gen generation creating something that they wholeheartedly believe in and that's something that you can get really excited about because there are a lot of filmmakers out there that are getting their their big break and are they making that film that they wholeheartedly believe in? Or are they just trying not to fuck up their big break? A lot of chances were, were uh, taken for the making of this movie. I know that Elizabeth Banks produced this movie, but I have to wonder like wh who else was on board to produce this just because it's so far from their first film, Shiva Baby, that you know almost like who would be in their right mind sign off on something that's this risky but that's what's really exciting for me is that someone was willing to really give uh, these filmmakers a shot to make something that they truly believed in. Uh, we've had other films this year obviously I mean it, it, beyond just you know being a, uh, a feminist movie I don't really want to like focus on that solely because i know that that can get you know like it can excite people and then it can kind of make people less excited but just the fact of being you know wholly original is really what i think can excite the you know the movie going population but uh right not to discredit anything. No, I think what you're saying is overall, like, I don't think that's our audience overall. I mean, maybe that is secretly our audience, but uh, overall, like, yeah, I know that there's a certain audience where if they hear the word feminism, they might be like, oh, well, this movie's not for me then. But hopefully, like, you know, that's not our audience. If it is like, you know, open your mind because you're missing out on a really fun movie overall. Uh, just because like, yeah, I didn't expect this out of, you know, after coming out of Shiva Baby. And, you know, you would think as a producer of this movie, you would want them to do like something similar but the fact that they took a chance on this is awesome and i hope that whatever studio because now i know that this movie is gonna it's getting great reviews you know it got a very limited release but is doing fantastic and it's limited release and it gets a wider release coming up and i know it's just gonna get great word of mouth and just keep going and stuff uh you know it's not gonna be like a huge like you know billion dollar movie but this is definitely in the movie where like i can already tell that studios are gonna fight to get this team working together again and i hope that they go in a completely different direction again like i can see them making a horror film why not let's do a funny horror film that's you know like a, a funny stance on like a final girl or something i can see them easily doing that but i can also see them doing another serious drama again not that shiva baby was very dramatic it was more of a drama but still had some dark humor elements to it but uh, you know just the fact that this movie was just so unpredictable like the only thing i can think of comparing it to is like like adult swim comedy even though there's nothing adult swim really about this movie i just associate that comedy as just like kind of random and i never know what direction it's going to go in with like you know like kind of the funnier die skits that like will ferrell john c Riley, and uh um the, the the director that they worked with like uh would all like kind of get into and like eric andre style comedy i guess is all i can really think of even though this isn't very similar to those so 
Yeah, funnier, a lot of funnier die Adam McKay stuff. I see like similarities there, but I think that this felt like wholly original, wholly fresh, being very campy. Well, it almost for me is like I said, there's two movies that's going on. There's a super campy movie that the that our main characters are almost stuck in. It felt like at times and it was just highly entertaining. It almost felt like it subverted, you know, that high school drama. I think the, uh, another film that you could easily tie this back to or saying that it was kind of similar to was obviously not another teen movie. This felt very similar to that, where at moments it feels very parody esque, but it's still feels wholly original. I enjoy not another teen movie, but for whatever reason, I see that being like a nostalgic film that people hold dear to their hearts and are like claiming it as like a classic. And I'm like, is that true? Or is this just nostalgia talking? Like, what are your thoughts on this? Because I hear so many people bringing it up these days. I don't think I've ever seen the movie all the way through, to be completely honest. Oh, okay. I got it on Comedy Central multiple times. So this is obviously an edited cut. But um, yeah, I never watched the film all the way through. But I remember every time I did it's tuned into the exact same part of the movie, which uh, or maybe I have seen the movie. I don't know. Maybe I have seen the movie all the way through, actually. But I, I do like the film, but I, it's pro it's been at least a decade since I've seen it. So it's not really a film that I'm quoting. I just felt like there are moments that the film is so camp and characters are so camp in the movie, especially uh, thinking about the lead jock kind of cheer or uh, lead jock football player, as well as the, you know, his his sidekick football player that's always looking out for his best interests, even though he's hardly a character himself. Just drive. Uh, you know, the Mercutio to his Romeo. I don't know. It just <laughs> felt, it was just so uh, weird, but hilarious. Like every time they're on screen, I mean, beyond just the kind of straight comedy that our two leads are, are portraying. I, I, this film is definitely going to be up there in my top of the year uh, easily. Uh, I mean, yeah, this film is just honestly very refreshing. I, the one thing I do worry about is will the generation that's out there wondering, you know, hey, this app is speaking to me more than, you know, the major Hollywood movies. Uh, I'm talking about TikTok, obviously referencing or whatever app that that, uh, you know, the younger generations are using. But will this be the film that actually speaks to them? Uh, from my perspective, an older an older generation, I did feel like, oh, this is definitely a movie that younger generations will love. Uh, but I enjoyed it as well. I didn't feel like you know, is beneath me or anything that younger generations will love. I'm just like, I think that some of this comedy, at least the first 30 minutes when I was trying to grasp the the uh, intricacies of this world that was being built, I was thinking like, oh, maybe this actually really appeals to like a younger generation or something. Uh, mm -hmm. And it just took me, you know, a little bit to actually get there. But I wonder if they'll come out full force, if they'll really enjoy this movie, similar to something for me, where when I first saw Superbad and was like, dude, there's no way movies could actually be like about, mm -hmm. you know, the same stuff that we might be going through at the time in which we saw it. I wonder if they'll, that generation will really, you know, come out in droves and support this movie, because I do think that this is really a movie that, you know, I might have jokingly said, oh, this is a film that's going to save cinema. But in a way, like <laughs> I honestly think that younger generations and uh, you know there's filmmakers that are actually speaking to their generation if they can support that it really will save cinema as a dying art form in a way right yeah I mean uh, if anything maybe not save cinema but maybe save the genre of just comedy itself because how many comedies do we get a year and they always kind of have to be a little over the top safer things like uh and kind of go more in an action route which we have constantly complained like why do all comedies have to incorporate action sequences or action set pieces and yeah while this movie has it plays it to its full effect though and it really does have to do with the plot i meant like it doesn't involve like a obscene car chase scene or like a weird car accident that just doesn't fit and just like that's unrealistic like this movie is just 100 percent unrealistic from the get-go i'd say but just still has some very fun thematic elements throughout it as well too um but yeah it just goes to show that you can still make comedy studios you just gotta give it to the right people and just like you know people who actually understand comedies like sometimes i swear they give like com comedy scripts to writers who just like 
be like, oh, well, for the movie to be funny, we should probably have a scene like this because that was funny in this movie, in this movie, and just like, that doesn't work out. That's not how you write a script and stuff. And, uh, you know, this team really knows what they're doing. Be sure to check it out because, you know, it's worth the time. Go see it in a theater. And eventually it's going to make its way on the line uh, on MGM Plus or whatever that MGM app is. And like, finally, that's when it is. This movie is going to be the movie that people start streaming to that app just to watch this. Maybe cancel it after a month or so. But uh, yeah, great way to help support the show is by watching it and leaving a comment down below to let us know what you thought about the movie. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button, hit the subscribe button and click that notification bell to get all the latest updates and if you can't get enough of us here on youtube be sure to catch all our social media links down below we got instagram twitter tiktok as well as our own personal letterbox accounts that'll conclude this week's episode tune in next week for a brand new video